with Rob Dowsett, Solution Architect and author of our Data Migration Readiness uh, section of our guide. So Rob, why is data migration usually more complicated and time consuming than most people expect? So I think once you dig into it, data migration is a, a little bit of a can of worms. You've got to do a number of different things that are uh, generally more complex than people first assume. So you need to uh, take into account, for example, your historical data, how you are going to um, clean and purge it. So your legacy system will have years and years worth of data. Not all of that will need to come across to your new system. So you want to first understand what, what it is you need to bring across. So that uh, could be cleaning up your customers. So only bringing customers that have had transactions, say, in the last three years. That could be removing duplicates, so duplicate uh, customers, duplicate products. Over time, you wind up with duplicates within your uh, some of your master files. And then also you will want to um, possibly revisit some of the decisions you've made and how you number or name those, those customers and items, for example. So it may be that you've tried to use a smart naming sequence or numbering sequence in the past and you want to move away from that. Uh, it could be that you're combining a number of systems and you have to renumber things across all those systems into one unified scheme. So those things on their own can take a, a large amount of time to gain uh, understanding of and then consensus of as to how you should move forward. Um, how do you go about planning for or starting the data migration process? What should organizations consider? So the first thing is to understand what systems and what data you're moving from and to. So if you have multiple legacy ERP systems, you want to understand which pieces of data are coming from which systems. So you want to take an inventory of those, those systems and have a rough idea of, of where things are coming from. So you might have one system that handles production that might have bill of materials and another system that doesn't have that information that might have general ledger information. So you want to figure out where that information is coming from. The next step will be to work through that cleansing process we talked about earlier. So making sure you're only bringing across information that you need. And then you will want to understand how you get that data out of those systems. So some of those systems, especially the older ones, getting the data out can be quite challenging. So that will take some time to first understand how to get it out. And then secondly, how to apply some of those criteria so we only bring out, for example, the last three years worth of active customers from that system. The next thing you can start to think about is how you automate this. During the course of an implementation, we'll probably run the data migration at least half a dozen times. So you want to minimize as much as possible the amount of manual effort that goes into extracting that information. So whether it's writing SQL scripts to extract that data or some sort of inline application, you want to try and automate that as much as possible. Okay, so how do you recommend handling historical transactional data? So historical transactional data can be a challenge to bring into a new system. So typically we bring in summaries of historical transactions. So you will bring in month ending balances for a number of years of financial information, for example. You also need to look at how you're reporting on that data moving forward. So will that be enough um, information to feed those reports moving forward as we look at those historic balances? Once we've got our historic balances, we can then start to think about our transactions. So those historic balances can feed some of those transactions. So you might have your uh, historic GL balances, you might have your opening accounts receivable balances, and then that, that might um, tie in with your opening accounts receivable transactions. So all three will work together and feed those reporting requirements, uh, both moving forward and also looking back at how many years we need to be able to report on. Great. Well, thank you, Rob. Appreciate your time. Thanks.